to burn. Too much worries, too much fears. I have a longing in my heart to see the Lord. In heaven there won't be no cross to carry There will be no sorrows through the endless fear The longing in my heart to see the Lord For his return to my troubles, he to bear to my worries, to my fear. I have a longing in my heart to see the Lord. To my troubles, he to bear. Too much worries, too much fear. I have a longing in my heart to see the Lord. Too much troubles here to bear. Too much worries, too much fear. I have a longing in my heart to see the Lord. bless you. I agree again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Could we rise up to our feet? I just want to, to, to appreciate each one of you that has come for the fellowship, the visitors that have come to stand with us, to have this fellowship on this great day that we normally call the Resurrection Day. Uh, we appreciate all of you. We have visitors, guests, we, 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 we thank you so much for coming. I hope the song leader has been able to recognize their presence. We are so grateful. The son of Brother Ruben, Moses. Now you guys, if you met Moses, you just know this. And then he get, if he's lost, I know there is only one home you can take him. To the home of Brother Ruben. <laughs> when you thought Peter resembles more than Ruben, Ruben than uh, um, Moses, then there is Joshua. We appreciate, we thank you so much. We want to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have a longing in our hearts, Lord. We want to thank you for the songs that have gone forth, Lord Jesus. Lord God, for what you did for us, oh Father, to put us where we are standing today by your grace. That even if Father, even the devil does not know we exist. Because he looked at the people you gave the program concerning your coming. And realized the people are still under the powers of the Gentiles. And is the devil using the powers of the Gentiles to oppress Israel. So he's wondering what is coming because it's a mystery coming. It is coming with the grace to forgive a people. To help the people understand who they are. Something that was never prophesied for the devil to listen to. Something that was never, Lord God, even figured out in the Bible for the devil to know how it looks like. It came as a surprise to the devil. He came as a surprise to all of us, Father. It is amazing grace, Lord. We invite you this morning to come and manifest yourself to us through the preaching of the word. Father, as we come to the close of the end, or uh, come to the ending of the services, we are so grateful that you've been with us in the past. And Father, may you do this again today. We take these scriptures as we read them, manifest yourself and help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. We shall be having... Uh, the second service, we shall have, uh, we shall close the second service with a, a, a prayer, a, a prayer, uh, an altar, an altar call for prayer, for requests. The brother will be praying for you as he'll be coming to build your faith toward what you want. You know, if you want to talk about, want people to give, create an atmosphere. 
and the atmosphere of giving, then people will give. If you want people to break, to get healed, to overcome the devil, create that atmosphere. And that is what the brother will be doing in the afternoon, so I can have some, I don't know whether I got this strength. Praise the Lord. So that we can have, uh, and um, we have um, some booklets here that we've, uh, our media man has printed, and there are enough copies for all of you. One is called The Coming of Elijah. It's not me that wrote it. It is a Brother Solomon, Jacob, that wrote it. And that's why at the end of the book, it is written the courtesy of Brother Solomon Jacob. It is this book, The Coming of Elijah. This brother is a Jew who was a message believer before. And he wrote another one, Elohim, God manifested in the flesh of William Branham, question mark. It is there. It is here. And then another booklet is called Clarence Larkin, 1920, what he preached in 1920, versus what William Branham preached in 1963, comparison, verse by verse. It will help you to capture a few things there. Amen. Those books, we've printed enough copies. We shall give them to you. Amen. And then we shall also have our own staff that represent what we stand for. Amen. Today, this morning, we want to go to a little bit of a teaching. And the little bit of a teaching, I'm not trying to stop your faith from believing for greater things. But I'm only confident today that uh, the, when the brother takes the service, prepare your faith to be able to grab something from the Lord. Amen. If what you're supposed to get from the Lord will be a healing that can be likened to the lepers, then so be it. A leper was not healed in the days of Jesus from the spot where he got an encounter with Jesus. He was told, keep walking and go and show yourself. While he was walking, the healing, the cleansing caught up with him. So he went and showed something happened between Jesus and the priest. He was said, go and show yourself to the priest because that was the commandment that had been given. While they were walking, they got healed. When they reached the priest, they were already healed. Then the other went, but this one returned to the place of the initial victory. And if you want to keep the spirit of victory in your life, you must connect with the initial victory in your life. The, the initial place where the victory struck you. And that's why Samson had to return to the place where the victory had been manifested in his life. You do that when you want to keep the spirit of victory. And from that, we have what we call the pilgrimage. Children of Israel going to, uh, to Jerusalem three times. And that's why Jesus Christ is returning. It's the place of his victory, right? So these people knew, for me to keep this, I have to go back to the place where it happened. So sometimes if the healing is something that you're saying, go, God is going to heal you. Go as if you're going to show yourself the priest. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So we, 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 that's what we're saying. We don't come and say, if I had a healing, I must be healed instantly. You might, you might not, but you'll be healed. Amen? Amen? Yeah. It can take place, I've witnessed it once. I've witnessed divine healing taking place. Amen. Three, several hours or the following day, I only experienced instant healing once in Nairobi Hospital. All of you know that. You know the clip. And that time I felt every part of me was charged like I've tagged electricity. And this lady was running, going to tell the, the nurse, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. And the nurse told her, even if you're healed, go back to bed. And then she's going back to bed limping because of a bad word that was spoken to her. When we prayed for her, she got and she was running from the bed. Running, going to tell the, the, the nurse, I'm healed, I'm healed. The nurse say, no, even if you're healed, go back to bed. And the nurse did not want us to record. So I told brother again, take this and record it. Ken's phone was full. I took mine and recorded it, and she came crying. You've, you've seen that clip, yeah? And I came to realize the people in the hospitals, they are there for different reasons as well. Yes. She told me, don't record this. So I talked to, I talked to my friend, uh, Kenny Zokari, you know Dennis Zokari of Nation? We talked for about three hours in Nairobi, and he told me I'm going to go and find out on 18th of December 2018 who are the names of the people that were in the hospital that were healed on that day, because all the four of them were discharged. Amen. The following day, it was after Pastor Vina had prayed for one, and then when she started walking, the sick people stood and said, 
told those people to come and pray. We went, and this one walked, was paralyzed from my feet downward. That was the first time I experienced a miracle healing taking place. Amen. But God is capable, yes. not only the ministry. The ministry helps you wherever you are, where the minister will not be. Lay your hands upon the sick, Amen. and even on the phone, believe him and pray. Say, okay, you have a problem, can we pray? And pray. Amen. And God will heal the people. Amen. You know it's not hard. Amen. He will heal the people. You need to Amen. believe it. Amen. 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 Let's cleanse our minds. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. we are approaching the scripture reading, Lord. Amen. Father, may you, may, you, may you, Father, speak to us from the same in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I want us to go straight to our scripture. Today we want to have a little bit of a teaching. We are calling it locating the second coming of Jesus in the scriptures. Why didn't you say Kiswahili? Kutafuta kutafuta kuja kwa pili kwa Kristo ndani ya maandiko. The Jesus Christ that is coming the second time, he is not going to come not to you. The second coming is different from the rapture coming. One coming can be located in the scriptures. Another one, it is a mystery coming. And that's why we are still talking about being able to divide the word of truth. There is a lot of confusion everywhere about the coming of the Lord. And people do not realize the coming of the Lord will take place seven years later after the rapture. They are not the same events. These are two separate events in the scriptures. And if you are waiting for the second coming of the Lord, be assured of one thing, you will have missed the rapture. Because the second coming of the Lord, there is nothing in the scripture that describes the second coming of the Lord to the body of Christ, but describes the rapture coming. And I want you to follow that thing very closely. I want you at the end, you'll realize, we are going to do a little bit of more repeating of this, that the rapture coming, no one can even capture it in the scripture. In the picture, sorry. No one can take a camera and say, hey, this is the second coming of the Lord. You can't do it. Amen. Because to the people who are being raptured have no time to take a picture but to go. Yes. Amen. 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 And the people who have got a camera, something of this earth will not see it. And then the people who are waiting for the second coming, the nations will be weeping. They cannot take a picture. They'll be so scared. They will be crying to rocks to hide them. Amen. And the children of Israel will not take the picture. They will be saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, which means save now, save now. They will be on the verge of getting destroyed. And they will have come out of a deception. Amen. So there is no picture on either comings that will describe the rapture coming or the second coming. The question is, where are this picture coming from? Who is this person that took a picture of the coming of the Lord? And they posted it somewhere. And this person who took this picture was not even a Christian. Was not even saved. He was simply looking for pictures to advance his research on the UFOs. And you people, do you think there is going to be a flying saucer that is going to pick you? No. Where did this teaching come from of a flying saucer, an identified object that was a sudden belief in the United States? And every government was flabbergasted, if that is still English. What are these things that are appearing and disappearing? And someone, someone was keen with this, then he came and said, don't worry. One of these days a flying saucer will come and you will step on it and go into the rapture. The Bible doesn't say that. It says for the Lord himself Amen. shall come and we that are alive shall be changed. Amen. It doesn't talk about a flying saucer. Amen. And if you go to the internet to, to look for UFOs, no wonder it was a ufologist who took the picture. Mm. 
Praise the Lord. Let's go to Matthew 24. I want you to be very keen on the scriptures you want to put before you. And that's why we shall be very emphatic until people get used to the Bible. Until people come to love the Bible. And they leave the rest of the other things and that will help them a lot. If you know the scriptures, I'm telling you no one can shake you. You just say you want us to debate. A clean debate. Let us agree. I'm giving you 30 minutes uninterrupted. When you are done, give me 30 minutes. If he's willing, there'll be no problem. I believe in that too. I don't believe in calling people names. I believe in, can we sit down and have a Bible discussion with the view that you can help me and I can also help you. With the view that after I've been helped, I'll help the next person. And that's what the Christianity is all about. We can have Christian nice debate to build one another. Where we can say, can we have this? If it's so much. I've had Jehovah's Witness visiting my house. And they have come, they have sat down, they have taken tea. And they have talked. And I say, can we talk after you've given me, give me a time to talk. Yes. I've had Seventh-day Adventist. I have another one who, uh, the three of them came and my wife I was at home. And then the scripture they were discussing, my wife told them, Jesus say, I and my father are one. Because the father lives in Jesus. So one of the Jehovah's Witnesses says, if Jesus is in you, if God is in you, can we worship you? Then my wife said, you can choose. <laughs> and then they promised to come again. If you know the scriptures, it doesn't matter who comes. That is it. And we are talking about people who have been so liberated in the spirit that they are just walking as daughters and sons of God. If you abuse them, they are not going to answer you back because they don't know that language. The language of abuse, they don't know it. Amen. They have been told, be the soul of the world. Amen. And if he tells you, I'm not ready now, don't say he's feared you. He doesn't just have time for you. Amen. But because he's looked at everything, he realized this is not going to help me. But I'm telling you, we call for debates. But someone turns out personal. Sometimes battle and can even they can even direct their wars against your family. A brother called H, I'm not going to mention his name, who has gone to school in the United, in South America, in South Africa, texted me something he found out about the abuses and people being threatened by the message believer because they have left the message. They have been calling him. He sent my on my phone here. It's because when people realize they are losing, they can even turn personal. I told someone I can do it. I can even do it worse than you think. But that is not my life. Don't try to resurrect a man that died out of Simon Shiveka. A man of bitterness, a man. Don't resurrect him. Amen. I know how he looked like. <laughs> because this is a new one. I can compare and say this one is not like that. Don't resurrect that idiot that died and Jesus buried. Let's, let's debate scriptures. Amen. Amen. That's important, isn't it? Amen. Let us draw parameters. We are going to be, and I told you the church here, we can only be scriptural alone. That's what we said. And I told you we shall read, listen to other preachers, men of God, from whichever walk of life where God has placed them. Because we don't believe we have it all. I, Simon Shiveka, does not believe I have it all. I believe there are other people elsewhere. And I'm praying God lead me to sit up people. Amen. And he has done it. Sometimes I get it from the YouTube and say, oh, my, this is really good. Amen. That is it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's go to Matthew 24. We don't go to our vomit. Amen. When we vomit something, we don't go back to it. Amen. We don't. And the temptation of someone trying to push you back to that man, don't. Say, so that man, you, you, you've been sent to connect with that man. That man was separated from me. Amen. You brothers, you're sitting, you brothers who you could actually come and sit in front of so the brothers who are coming later can walk by the, uh, the other seats. Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verse 30. A 
and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming the clouds of heaven with the power and great glory you may be seated what is the next next scripture right there We are teaching on locating the second coming of Jesus in the scriptures. Let's go to second Peter. From verse 16. I want you to look at verse 16 here in second Peter chapter 1 verse 16. Because we need to find where this thing originated that Simon Peter is mentioning. Moreover, I will enter verse 15. That you may be able after my de disease to have these things always in remembrance. Simon Peter is speaking one event in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Among all the thousands and hundreds that uh, John said, what the Lord Jesus Christ did. If we were to write or to document, there would be no place to write all of them. So Simon Peter is clipping one of the events that meant so much to Peter. And Peter was one of the people, that the only one that walked on the water when Jesus Christ invited him to come. Simon Peter, James and John were always at the very significant places when significant miracles of Jesus Christ took place. They were at mountains vicaration. They were the temptation of Jesus. They were the resurrection of Lazarus. They were the resurrection of Jairus' daughter. And these three people meant a lot to the Lord Jesus Christ's ministry. The greater thing that Jesus Christ would not do until Simon Peter is around. And I want you to realize there are only two people in the Bible that the Bible refers to as beloved of the Lord. One of them is from the Old Testament called Daniel. The second one is John. And there is a reason why the Bible calls them the beloved. Because of the things they got in relation to the second coming of the Lord. Amen. And these are the people. And I want you to realize the relationship of Jesus Christ with John was so close. That John understood the really Antichrist during that time. Which was Judas, the son of Partition. And that's why the same man comes in the book of Revelation and also can identify the same Antichrist that was typed in Judas Iscariot. He has all the clear understanding. This John receives a coming of the Lord that is not the rapture coming. Now we realize as we are going to the scripture, Simon Peter remembers one event in the life of Jesus Christ. And this event, the way Jesus Christ appeared to Simon Peter, we want to locate him elsewhere in the Bible. His appearance, his voice, and the effect that one had on the people that witnessed it. Amen. So he says, for we have not followed, and he says, I want to leave this with you before I die, because he knew he would die. And even says, the Lord has shown me my departure. But I want to leave something with you. And while he's talking, we want to understand what was the audience that Simon Peter was talking to. In the first letter, it shows us the audience. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. He is talking to the Jews that were scattered. Amen. Amen. When we go to James, we find James is saying, James a servant of the Lord to the stranger, to the 12 tribes. So that gives us an audience to know how to direct our meditation and our expectation. Amen. So Simon Peter, while he's writing these things, he says this, before I leave the earth, I want to point to you something very spectacular that I witnessed that I wanted to remain with you. The scattered in Cappadocia. Amen? Amen. 
the strangers in all the land. He says, for we have not followed cunningly devout fable when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus. So the thing he wants to live with the people is the power and the coming of Jesus Christ. Which means he understood how it is going to look like. And this is what he said. When we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Which means they witnessed the coming of the Lord. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mountain. So Simon Peter is referring to mountains vicarion and is calling it the power and the coming. So Mount Transfiguration was not just these people to go and witness Jesus Christ being transfigured in a cloud. It was for them to witness Jesus coming in power. Amen. So Simon Peter is looking back on that scripture and he's telling them that is the only thing I've picked to live with you. Amen. The power and the coming. Amen. Now, little did we know that uh, Revelation, uh, Matthew 17 was the coming of the Lord until Peter looks back. If it was you, would say, and let me tell the people one of the greatest things that ever happened in my life. I, Simon Peter, son of Jonah, brother to Andrew, walked on the water. But Simon Peter never did that. He said, I don't want you to go around preaching and telling people Simon Peter walked on the water. I want you people to be booed in the expectation of the coming of the Lord. And he's saying it is not going to take place while I'm around, but I'm a witness of exactly how it is going to look like. Amen. He knows exactly how it is going to look like. And if Simon Peter had a camera, he would have taken a picture of it. But he says, you people we have not followed, cunningly devised fable. When we made known to you the power and the coming of the Lord. In other words, they were preaching the second coming. Because we made known to you the power and the coming of the Lord. Who are these people that was told the power and the coming of the Lord? It was not the church, the body of Christ. Because a word had not been issued from the right channel to communicate the rapture coming to our people. It was what we call the little flock that received Jesus that from this group God took a portion from the entire children of Israel and put another visitation in future for them. And that's why Peter himself in the book of Peter says we are talking about the grace that shall be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus. So this coming we are dealing with is also called the revelation of Jesus. Revelation is not a knowledge. It is the removing of the curtain that you people may see the coming of the Lord. Amen. So we found our scripture and we said yesterday, the Old Testament is God and his prophets. Amen. Matthew, Luke and John is God and his son. Period. When you look for the promise of what we call the rapture coming, you don't get in the Old Testament. You don't even get it in the gospel of Jesus Christ, because Paul called it a mystery. Amen. And when he called it a mystery, he said it had never been known to the sons of men. And if it had not been known to the sons of men, their salvation, their visitation was a mystery that was never prophesied at all. Amen. Now, when I say that, I have to remind you, the salvation of the Gentiles that is recorded in the Old Testament is connected to their attitude to Israel as a nation. Amen. But the salvation of the body of Christ that is called a new creature is only connected to the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Amen. So Gentiles will be saved in the Old Testament as the nations with goodwill like the Kibionites. Who came when the nation, seven nations were being destroyed in the land of promise. 
But the Kibionites came and said, please, we want to be working for you. Can you accommodate us? And God said, because he had left a promise. In Genesis chapter 12, he that blesses you, Abraham, shall be blessed. He that curses you, Abraham, shall be cursed. Amen. And Jesus upheld the same promise in Matthew 25, when he talked about blessing and cursing. He said, those on the left, those were the nations. You cast of the Lord. God has kept his word of Genesis 12. On the right, he said, you blessed of the Lord. He still stayed together with the Genesis chapter 12. And there was not the bride. I'm saying that bride that we've always known and called the bride. You are not there at all. Amen. Because you had already been raptured when Jesus comes to judge the nations. Amen. And there is a specific language that Jesus referred to the Jews. He called them my brethren. Amen. He said as there were three groups of people there. One was the sheep and they were not saved. They are not going to enter into the, in the kingdom because they are saved. They are entering because I was hungry. Amen. I was naked. Amen. I was thirsty. And you gave me this. Amen. So they are not even saved. It is works related to what they did to Israel Amen. during the tribulation time. Amen. Are we together so far? Amen. They are not saved by believing the Lord Jesus Christ. But when we come to the Old Testament in the book of Zechariah, chapter 8, verse 23, we find people now who are from the nations interested in the God of Israel. And they're saying, we want to go with you to Jerusalem. That is another group that are also getting grafted in Israel because of the blessings of God on Israel. Amen. That is another group from the nations too. And then we come in the book of Revelation chapter 7 from verse 9. It's the 9 or 19 going forward where John was asked, who are these people? And John says, I do not know who they are. Amen. After 144,000 have already been sealed, there is another group of people, the Bible says, you cannot even number them. Great multitude. Amen. And even John cannot know who they are. You know why? John doesn't even know who you are. Amen. John said he didn't know. But when he went 44,000, he could identify. He said 12 tribes from Reuben, 12 tribes from Manasseh, 12 tribes from. It's just right here in the back. Can someone just. It's just in the back right here. 12 tribes from Naphtali, 12 tribes from uh, Levi. He could identify. Can you imagine someone identifying 12,000 because they were his brethren? But another group came out and the angel asked him, do you know who these people are? He said, I don't know. He said, these are the ones that came from the great tribulation. They have washed their garments. Amen. Amen. Fine, fine. I got right here. You know, my channel is open anyway. I don't even realize I'm sweating and this thing is right here. Can I just relax? Yeah. There is a group of people here, but John was told, who are they? And then there was an angel in the book of Revelation, thank you, Mr. Marianne and Sister God, we were talking the other day. When this angel in the book of Revelation was showing John these things, John wanted to worship him. And the angel was, don't worship me. I am one of your yeah. brethren. That goes to show he's not even a Gentile. Amen. Because according to John, walls of separation between the Gentiles and the Jews still exist. Amen. It is only Paul that understood the wall of partition has been removed in formation of a new person on earth, which you are. Amen. But according to John, they still exist, the Jews and the Gentiles. Amen. That's why in one of the address was, when God spoke, there are people among you that call themselves Jews. Amen. Under the synagogue of Satan. Why did the word Jews come up? Because the world still existed in their gospel of the kingdom. Amen. And the gospel of the kingdom and the separation of the world was reinforced by John and Jesus 
When he said, I've only come to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, he reinforced the world that separated the Gentile from Israel. Amen. When he called, talked to the woman at the, the Syrophoenician woman, he reinforced the wall. Amen. When he sent the disciples in Matthew chapter 10, he reinforced the wall. Amen. When Simon Peter in chapter 10 verse 28, when he went to the house of Cornelius a Gentile, he also reminded him. You are a Gentile, and it's not permitted for a Jew to go to the Gentile. Reinforce the wall. Yeah. And when Peter met them in the book of Colossians, Paul met them. After he has gone to receive the revelation, he came and told Peter, John, and James, what is preaching among the Gentiles, and they identified there is a wall between the preaching of Paul and our preaching. And they gave Paul Barnabas. The hand, right hand of fellowship, and say, hey, Paul, go to the uncircumcised as we go to the circumcised. Yeah. And so if John's message was to the circumcised, you cannot take the book of Revelation and pin it to uncircumcised. Never. Amen. 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 And I want to say this. When you are dealing with this kind of a thing in the scriptures, you have to understand, number one, what is the audience? The language used will give you the keys to understand that audience. The way Jesus Christ dresses, even the way he looks like in his face, will tell you to whom he's addressing. So Jesus said a language. He said in Matthew 25, as you did to the least of my brethren, in the book of Romans, he's called my brethren. In the book of Revelation 12, the accuser of my brethren. Can I tell you something? The devil can't accuse you. He doesn't know how you got saved. And there is nothing against you for the devil to take it before God. He doesn't know how you came. You are mysterious. Amen. And when you came, you didn't, you didn't come and were given stages to reach to a place where the devil cannot accuse you. When you came, number one, you were told. In Ephesians 1, 4, you were chosen in him before the world began. And then it tells you, you are baptized in a perfect body. How can someone that is perfect, already in a body you can't judge, be accused? God would ask the devil, where did you find him? Amen. He's in my body. Yeah. And the body has already been judged. Yeah. It is a perfect body. Yeah. The devil can't accuse you. Yeah. Amen. I want to tell you, I want you people to have assurance of what happened to you when he got saved you. And I will tell you why Jesus with the flames of fire can never come to a such a person. Tutamuulizo mekuja kufanya nina mo na macho kama mwari wa moto na sauti kama yangurumo. Such a person only comes to judge. I pass from judgment into life. And that's why we insist what scripture? Second Timothy. Read that scripture for me as I take some water here. Can you allow me to preach? Amen. If you don't get it right, we shall delay you are going home. If you don't read it fast enough. Second Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth because the word has divisions. And what we are doing today, we are dividing it. We are dividing the second coming from the rapture coming. We are dividing the church kingdom that began in the book of Acts chapter 2. And the church that would have not come until the mystery was revealed to Paul. How can you take us to Acts chapter 2 when all men of Jerusalem were the audience of Peter? And Peter was preaching to the nations. We are not preaching to the nations. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. I want to go back and say this. Even in the normal, in the, in the court of law, there is something they call double jibadi, or if you come from this place, double jibadi. Where you cannot be jibed 
accused of something you have already been exonerated from. Amen. <laughs> you can apply for something I don't remember. That explains, he says, someone was already either paid for the crime, either a fine, or he has already served the sentence, cannot be accused of the same wrong doing. It is called double jeopardy. And the Bible says, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Amen. And the word justification is a judicial word. It is to be declared innocent. Amen. And someone who has been declared innocent, no one can go and accuse him. Amen. 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 Do you see why we need to divide these things? Yes. The accuser of our brothers. And God listens. And God listens. God did that when Satan went to accuse Job. The tribulation in the life of Job, doctrinally speaking, cannot be pinned to the body of Christ. Amen. Instructively, it can. But doctrinally, it can only be pinned to the righteous man, Israel, the Jew. How the devil went and accused when God says, have you considered my servant? Say, nah. Just because he's rich, do like this. He went through all that. Later on, there was a, a restoration. Amen. And I told you, that's why we say even Samson, the deception of Samson as a man who was born to deliver the children of Israel is a type of Israel herself. That shall be deceived and awakened to the purpose why he was born. Amen. And he will die with those nations. Amen. Now these things are very important when they come into the scriptures. You know this thing shakes the choice of God. Yes. When, you tell the de when you say the devil can accuse you. And God can listen. It is like you are trying to challenge God's choice. When he put Jesus as a propitiation for your sin. He completely paid for your sin. Amen. He completely cleansed your past. Amen. Gave you remission. Amen. And I told you the word remission means to divorce. To separate Amen. and annul any other mutual agreements before. Amen. An agreement you ever made with the devil. It is separated. And even the, if you go to Strong's, it will tell you. It means, and leaves the other partner to himself. Amen. When you are remitted, it leaves the person you are united with to himself. And annuls all the mutual agreements that existed. That is the meaning of the word remission of sin. Amen. That sin was so separated from you, that any other covenant you made with the sin does not bind after the blood. Amen. Amen. And I told you, if I can just say something little, when you confess your sin, when sin touches the blood, it begins its journey Amen. to where it was going. Amen. Sin was going to be judged and burned in hell. Amen. And then it came to get stuck to you by your first birth. Amen. But the blood comes and strikes and separates. Amen. And then sin starts its own journey. Where are you going, sin? I'm going to hell. One time I told you, Jesus Christ came and told the devil, you want someone to go to hell? Let me go to hell on their behalf. Amen. And he took all your sins. Amen. Jesus took all the sins of adultery. Amen. Fornigator. Amen. These are the names I don't want to mention, you can imagine. Amen. All of them, and he was accused of the same by the laws of God. Amen. And he says, sin, you wanted to take someone to hell? Take me. Amen. And then they went, went, well, and when he reached to hell with those sins, because I was supposed to go there, sin cannot come back. Amen. Because it has gone into the incinerator. It was incinerated, Amen. obliterated, right away from you. When Jesus came, he came alone. Amen. And the Bible says, so holy. Amen. The most sinful man on earth was who? 
Why do people don't know good English? Should have said the only one, there was only one sinful man on earth. And that man is Jesus. Amen. He took all the sin of the world. Amen. And when he is dead, he had such a nature that sin could be separated. Amen. The devil with all his sin, the problem is you cannot separate from the devil the sins. Because that's a part of his heritage. That's who he is. So we are realizing here, Peter is saying, I was a witness of that. Amen. If he was a witness of this, why did Simon Peter call man transfiguration the coming of the Lord? And if you believe in the coming of the Lord, you would be seated here anointing Moses and Elijah. Amen. But the moment you can be able to split the rapture coming, and the second coming, you have no connection to an Elijah, whether he is in this Kenya, or uh, you know, Lujas have also some of these guys called Elijahs. When you have that one, when you have another one, and another one, and another one, so long as you believe in the rapture coming, no Elijah has a work to do in your life. Amen. When the, and I told you yesterday, when John was here, that was the anointing of Elijah. But there was an Elijah that was connected to the second coming and an Elijah connected to the first coming. In between is the rapture coming. Where do you put Elijah? Nowhere. Amen. There could have never been the first coming until there is a spirit of Elijah. Amen. To prepare the way. Amen. To turn the hearts. Amen. And there can never be a second coming unless there is an Elijah. Amen. To turn the heart. Amen. But there, Amen. these two Elijahs, in between is the rapture. Amen. How can an Elijah come in between here? When Paul stood and said, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwelled in you, he that raised Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies. Amen. 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 Our Asha, Brother Ruben, if you identify someone that needs interpretation, then Brother Ken, that is the purpose. If someone needs to, an interpretation because you're running with the time, you could just withdraw to the backside so that we can have uh, that. Brother Ruben, you find that if there is such, then we can. We realize there would have never been a first coming without a larger coming. Amen. Then there would never be the second coming without a larger coming. Amen. But there can be a rapture without Moses, without Elijah, because it's a mystery. Amen. And when he Paul to whom the mystery was open to, he stood and said, God chose me to reveal a mystery that was not known to the sons of men. That is Ephesians chapter 3. Roll down, maybe verse 6. Verse 9, he says, it was hid in God. Amen. You can't get it unless you get a permission. And the permission would be granted to the prophets of the Old Testament that they spoke about the promise of the prophesied coming Messiah. They never touched anything to do with the second, with the rapture coming. So first coming of the Lord, Elijah has to be on the land. Amen. To whom is he coming to? The Jews. Because that is what Zechariah said. Zechariah, the father of John. In Luke chapter 1, verse 68, 69, 70. That now this one is going to deliver us as he promised. So Jesus came to Israel according to the promise. Amen. We had no promise of the coming of the Lord to us. Because if it was, it would have existed in a prophecy. And if it existed in a prophecy, Paul would be wrong to say it is a mystery that was never known to any man. Stay with the scriptures. Amen. We have a lot to replace with, say, with the tape teaching. Right. Yeah, uh, talk to brother, brother. I don't know whether that arrangement can be done or we are already in the middle of... happening here is this. Why is Elijah enjoined in the first coming and why is Elijah enjoined the second coming? Because Elijah is a messenger to the heart. 
and our hearts have never been described anywhere. God never took our time to discern our hearts and to see how hard they are. We were just sinners. We were not even people of interest as far as God is concerned. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2 says we were without God, without Christ, without the covenants, aliens of the covenants of Israel. So there is no time our heart came around and God looked at the heart and said, oh, this one is hard. I have to send a messenger. The first messenger Elijah sent, he was sent for one purpose. Turn the heart. I want to ride. And a, co a, a covenant. And we cannot write without first of all comparing the first appearance when the writing of the law was ever done in the Bible. It was done in the book of Exodus. Amen. And it was 50 days after the slain lamb Amen. in Egypt. Amen. And in the day of Pentecost, it was 50 days after the slain lamb at Calvary. Amen. And what was happening in the day of Pentecost was hearts that had been turned by Elijah, John the Baptist, Amen. are now going for the writing of the law by the Spirit of God in the day of Pentecost. Amen. Mumeshika. Amen. So we have to look at how they were first written and that will be right again. So the, their hearts needed to be changed. And Elijah was sent to change their hearts. And that's why when John, after he has preached water baptism, fulfilling Ezekiel 36 I will sprinkle clean water upon you and the water the water will sprinkle on them what to follow was the turning of the heart what to follow the turning of the heart was a new spirit what to follow the new spirit was my spirit Amen. then there is a people that remain for Elijah to come and turn their hearts and when he turns their hearts then they will look upon him whom they have crucified and they shall cry Amen. And at that time, then they shall receive their Messiah. That's why Elijah is enjoying the first coming and the second coming. Elijah can now come from nowhere and come to the Gentiles. But when he comes to Israel, they know. And that's why we say something very important and very clear here. We said the first Elijah never had a wife. He never had a family. He was not, he was circumcised. I'm not using this word to, to pull anyone down. I'm only describing the Elijahs that have gone. Amen. The second was Elisha, a Jew without a family, circumcised. Amen. The third was John the Baptist, a Jew, circumcised without a family. Amen. Now, if your fourth has those qualifications, let us not even go with the circumcision because it will look personal. Because it deals with the genitals. Let's go. Does he have a family? No. Does he have a, is he a Jew? No. Now there should be an explanation. Yes. Amen. And if he's coming not to Israel, what is he coming to the Gentiles to do? Turn their hearts? Restore their hearts? We are not being restored. We are getting saved. Sisi aturejeshu kwa kitu tunaokoka. Na wewe ulio hapa kazi yako ni kuokoka. Na wewe, wewe si mtu wa dunia hii. Wewe ni mtu wa mbinguni. Mtu wa dunia hii ni Muyahudi. Muyahudi ndio alipewa inji. Sisi tulipewa mbingu. Ndio tutanyakuliwa. Ufufuo wa kwanza si ufufuo wako. Watu wasomi maandiko vizuri. In the book of Revelation Chapter 20 from verse 4. It talks of a group of people that it says, This came out of the great tribulation. They shall reign with the Lamb on earth, and this is the first resurrection. But there is another resurrection. You don't even call it the first or second. It is found in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51. I tell you a mystery. Now, I'll say any Siri. Sisi hatutalala wote lakini tutanyakuliwa. Kwa nini Paulo aliita siri? Ni kwa sababu haikuwa imetamkwa na mtu yeyote kwa Biblia. Hii ndio sababu akaita siri. And we realize if we go in the Old Testament, we find people are expecting a resurrection. Give me one of them. Job says, I will stay in the dust and, and wait for my change. 
for my redeemer liveth. That was an obvious resurrection. Amen. Joseph told the brothers, carry my bones. I know God is going to visit you. He resurrected. He expected a resurrection. Yeah. Abraham bought Machpelah. He expected a resurrection. Yeah. Before we go there. Daniel chapter 12. There is a resurrection promised. And it's not called a mystery. Hallelujah. Amen. Mary and Martha when Lazarus died. They made the very resurrection. And he said, she said, I know he will resurrect in the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Yeah. Because the resurrection is a person. Yeah. But you are the person that resurrection will step forward to before he goes to Israel. Yeah. The resurrection of Israel will take seven years after the rapture. Yeah. And when they resurrect, they resurrect to go into the kingdom. While you resurrect to go up, that's the difference. Yeah. Your resurrection takes place before their resurrection. Yeah. But I, I preached one message here and I called it, the regions and compartments of heaven. Amen. God has got orders of people. But the Paul, when he talked about your resurrection, he said, behold, I tell you a mystery. Amen. We shall not all sleep, Amen. but we shall be changed in a twinkle of an eye. We shall, those who are alive, it was a mystery. So it was not something to look for in the Old Testament. You will miss it. And that now shows us why Jesus had to come secretly to Paul. And he never told the apostles that, you know, I'm going, but I'll come to Paul. Never. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He know, that is even a secret he never revealed to John as much as he was a beloved one. Amen. On how I'm going to come to call the Gentiles. He never told John. I love him. Amen. Me Panda Sana. Amen. He came Amen. according to the scriptures. Amen. Today, give me two hours. Amen. Amen. And I'm already advancing those two hours. <laughs> Listen, he never told John that I had come later. He only told them, if you keep my commandments, I will ask God to give you another comforter. And he's always telling them commandments, commandments, commandments. And in the book of chapter, John chapter 5, verse 28. Those who are in the grave shall hear the voice of the Son of God. Those who have done good to the resurrection of the blessed. It, their, their resurrection is connected to what they did. Amen. Your resurrection is pure grace. Amen. Your resurrection is Jesus Christ. Amen. The same one that raised Christ from the dead after justifying him will raise you after justifying you. Amen. There are no works connected to your resurrection. Amen. Amen. You know, it becomes a problem when we come back and we have to repeat the same thing we've spoken and we are all seated here. Now pray God to help you to give you a memory of the Spirit. Amen. That the Spirit of God can walk to you when you are getting into meditation. Amen. When you are meditating, let every, every channel open to you. And let it open into a worship. Let us see not how God saved the world. Get into a fellowship to see how God loved and saved you. Amen. And the fellowship in the love of God. Amen. Amen. In the near future, perhaps nearest, mm -hmm. you will come here and never found any dress that shows we were believers of Brana. Utakuja hapa na utachanga. Na tutakuliza unisema nani? Halikuwa nitoka wapi? We want our really washing Amen. until we can't even mention. Amen. But right now, we are putting demarcations. Yes. When you find us hard, this most because it's not easy. Yes. It is one of the things, Baka, you can't explain what this is all about. You want to take this and you put it to the rapture coming, you are wondering, why did McDonald take it? I'm sorry you had to commit suicide. Why did you take it? And McDonald said, no, I just took this picture on my own research and it appeared on Time Magazine. Or oh, what do you call it? Ah, oh, we are calling it the coming of the Lord. We are calling it the coming of the Lord. McDonald could ask you, why did he come to you? He came to assign his who took a picture in America. Amen. Can Jesus Christ come to a non-believer? How much does 
because he loves you. That he can ignore you and come to be taken by an unbeliever. That this is the picture of the coming of the Lord. How much love does Jesus have for you? Can he do something on earth without... Oh my God, you should be a part of it. And if this has to do with the second coming that is promised in Israel, why did it happen in the United States? When you go to the, uh, the documents of the government of the United States, they will tell you exactly what this is. And in fact, there were two clouds. Brother Ken is untrue. There was another one by side. This guy took this one, and the one took and inserted the eyes to deceive, not me. Not you. Yes. Where can you bless this? Second coming? Where are the tribes not weeping and crying? According to Matthew 24 verse 30. If it's the rapture, why aren't you still here? 50 something still years to come. When Paul talked about the rapture, he said, The Lord himself. Can you say it? Himself. Himself. Not through Simon Shiveka. Not through brother so and so. The Lord himself. Not the Lord through a whirlwind. Not through a cloud. The Lord himself. The coming of the Lord. That is called the rapture. Is nothing you can put to an. He cannot trust an angel. The way he couldn't trust an angel. With his death for you. Amen. 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 When Jesus came to die for you, it was the Lord himself. Yes. When he's coming to pick you, the Lord himself. Yes. He's not coming and turning your back. Turn your back as thousand times as you wish to. Yes. That has nothing to do with the coming of the Lord. Yes. And it is only the Lord Jesus Christ that the God manifested in the flesh. There is never another person like it. Amen. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Great is the mystery of goodness. For God was manifest in flesh. Hallelujah. Why is it God great is the mystery? Because it was not known that God could be born in flesh. And then you come and turn your little bag around and tell us that is God in flesh. That is blasphemous. Amen. Amen. You understand what I'm talking about? Amen. There was only one man, the Bible says, the fullness of God dwelled in him bodily. And the people that are accustomed to worshipping idols, when I'm preaching again, they think, I'm a messenger. Now, I'm no messenger of anybody. I'm a little servant of the Lord, a pastor to this church alone. I'm not a messenger, and we're not looking for no messenger at all. We have Jesus, that is enough. But the idol worshiper think, now William Branham was there. Why did that mean? Let me mention him. <laughs> Call himself the seventh messenger. Now these people are saying, there is another seventh. You're listening to me? There is no messenger. Yes. Not the sixth, not the seventh, not the eighth. It is unscriptural. It is Jesus and Jesus alone. Yes. It is scriptures and scriptures alone. Yes. We are not interested in messengers. We are not idol worshippers. We are worshippers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. I accuse me, but when someone listens to me, he goes back to me. But Simon was preaching the scriptures. Yes. Not opinion, and I'm packing what I'm thinking about the scriptures. Yes. Yes. You love the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. You can't pin it anywhere in the comings. If it's the rapture, an unbeliever took the picture. If it's the coming of the Lord, God. You are called the God of Israel. You will take it to America. And you, you still have all mad and the prime minister of Israel still struggling. They do not know their Messiah. And you have it in every church out here. I would have told this in part, but I've got some little notes behind. <laughs> And the little notes are saying, past ages, present age, and ages to come. We can't just tell that. <laughs> we have got grace only, law and grace, works and grace, and works, millennium. And I can't tell you, you are precious, not you. <laughs> this is what God has done. Now, Peter. When he's looking at this scripture here, 
it was in connection to the second question, Matthew 24. Read for us. Matthew 24. And let me recap it for a few people. As a pyramid is called a pyramid, by one stone that comes on top of it, so is the Bible completed by the book of Revelation. If the book of Revelation was not there, you wouldn't have understood because the book of Revelation has symbols that it points you to the past time when God was dealing with Israel. It has got candlesticks. And there is a reason why the candlesticks is not one, but seven. It represented the scattering of the children of Israel. There was one, but later on there are seven. You can only understand the book of Revelation. The only thing that unlocks the book of Revelation is the Old Testament, where we get here a little, there a little, preset, but has been upon preset, right there. You can never understand the book of Revelation without, first of all, going to God's dealing with Israel. Amen. I will prove that in a while. Can you read the scripture for us? Just a minute. Yeah, read Matthew. Matthew 24. And as he sat upon Mount Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be? What things? He had spoken about destruction of the temple. Yes. So they are asking, when shall it be? And when shall this? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? Is there a long period between those two events? The destruction of the temple and the coming of the Lord. There is a vast, big, huge time in between. Amen. The destruction of the temple that happened... And the sign of the second coming. Amen. Continue. And the end of the world. And the coming of the Lord Jesus. Is that the end of the world instantly? No. Because he has to come and reward the people to judge others. And this end is connected to when we shall enter into our kingdom. So one question deals with the kingdom. Another question deals with the coming before the kingdom. And the other one deals with the destruction of the temple. Three questions. Jesus answered all those questions. Okay? And then at the end, he's coming to our scripture reading. Verse 20. Verse 30. What does it say, verse 30? And immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Then. <laughs> and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Uh -huh. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Did you get it? After tribulation of those days, So, if you are waiting for the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, it will only come after tribulation. Have you missed the rapture or you have not? Does the tribulation come after the rapture or before the rapture? Tribulation comes after the rapture. And if you are waiting for the sign in the sky, and you see him where the nations will be mourning, you will have missed the rapture. Yes. And for us to happen, there will be two groups of people. Those who will be mourning and those who will be waiting for him to come and save. Not to be raptured. What is the event? After the tribulation. Amen. No tribes mourning here. <laughs> And they're not only going to mourn like that. They're also going to cry to the mountains. Hide us. Yes. People are nervous and anxious. Because he's coming. That is not you. Amen. That's why Paul says. Let there not be anxiety. Amen. You people. Amen. Have found peace. Amen. And the way he comes. You can say if it is him. That's not me. These eyes, like flames of fire, 
reveals what he's coming to do. I'm not a person to be judged. Amen. I found mercy. Amen. And why would you come to me like that? Amen. Now, we understand Matthew 24. The whole of it deals with the three questions Jesus answering them. And these people, <laughs> let me ask you a question. How can the disciples sit down to listen to answers that pertains to our people that never asked? <laughs> How can these people listen and sit down there when they had already been told in Matthew chapter 10, don't go to the Gentiles. And then Jesus himself is also sitting, telling them about the gender. And he said, I've only come to the lordship of the house of Israel. The audience and the question and the answers. That time the body had not come. Listen to me. Amen. This man that is coming. Let's now read what Peter referred to Matthew 17. I mean it. What did Jesus, Peter call Matthew 17? According to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. What did he call it? The power and the coming. The power and the coming. Verse 28 of Matthew 16. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. You know where this scripture is recorded in Mark 9 and Luke 9? There are no chapters. It flows. And after six days, Jesus took Simon Peter, James, and John to a great mountain apart, and there he was transfigured. And there appeared to him Moses and Elijah speaking to him. And he changed. Amen. He changed. When he changed, can we look at how he looked like? Amen. Amen. Our message is locating the second coming of Jesus in the scriptures. Amen. We want to look at his face. Amen. How does he look like, Brother Godfrey? What kind of this coming that is connected with Elijah? second coming. Because Elijah was present for the first coming. Elijah is present for the second coming. But the, the rapture coming is a mystery. And I will tell you. Continue. Read for us. And after six days Jesus taken Peter, James and John his brother and bringing them up into a high mountain apart and was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Okay, continue. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, is it good for us to be here? If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Now, I want you to go to Luke chapter 9 verse 27. I want us to look at the effect this man had on the people that witnessed it. Tuataka tuone matokeo ya Yesu Kristo na vile hao watu walioona ujio wake ni nini lifanyika kwao. Na haya matokeo yote tuyatafute katika agano la kale tuone kama matokeo yale ni moja. We want to look at the effect this Jesus Christ had on James, John, and Peter. And locate this kind of appearing in the Old Testament to the children of Israel. Listen to this. Jesus Christ is going to choose an attribute in which he's going to reveal the second coming. And it's not going to be something new. It is something you can locate in the Bible. Amen, amen. Amen. I repeat. Jesus Christ is not just going to come. He's not going to come to Israel as a wild wind. His coming has already been designated. How is going to look like? In Matthew 17. So he's not going to come in a man. <laughs> if Elijah was coming, it was the coming of the Lord, or Moses, then Jesus would have missed on a man transfiguration. 
And when Peter talks about the coming of the Lord, he didn't mention Peter. He didn't mention Elijah and Moses. Yes. Although they were there, but he didn't mention them. Amen. Because they are waiting for Jesus, the great coming. Amen. Amen. Now already we have got boundaries. How he will come. Listen to me. Don't be quiet on me. Amen. 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 He is not going to come like a wild wind. If he comes a wild wind, we say, although you came to Job like a wild wind, you are not the one. Because Peter saying he was the eyewitness of that coming. Amen. You can't come and change in the middle. Amen. And bring a bag. Amen. When you brought a face. Thank you. <laughs> you can't bring a bag now and say, you people in California and you in Phoenix listening to me. We are the generation that was supposed to see Jesus Christ return to the earth. And this day, this scripture is fulfilled. And everyone is, oh, unscriptural people. Amen. Peter said, I saw it. Amen. What I've given is a quotation from the message. This day, this scripture is fulfilled. The last page. He said, I have, let me quote word for word. Because I have good memory on what he said. He said, I have a dozen scriptures and many more scriptures. That shows we are the generation that would see Jesus Christ return to the earth. And I say to you in California and in Phoenix and wherever, this day this scripture is fulfilled. And if you are uncomfortable with what I'm saying, there are places to go. <laughs> Can I be hard? Yes. Amen. Here we are not preaching Branham. If you think one day we are going to come, Brother, we shall wish you goodwill, goodwill, and more grace to you wherever you go. Here, not Blanham, the scriptures only. Amen. 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 And the faster you live, the better. Amen. Amen. Not in a bad way. Because we, you will not, you will die hungry. Because you are a good person, I'm not a good person. Why should we do a disservice? Why should you come here expecting something to be quoted from the sale book, calling it the mystery, when the Bible doesn't call it the mystery, and then you call me heretic? How can you call me heretic when the Bible doesn't call the seven seals mysteries? Why did the seven seal associate itself with Simon Wafi, and you are calling the seven seal book is the book of life? When the book of life is mentioned elsewhere toward the book of Revelation, there is no question on who's worthy to take the book. So if you come here and you want me to quote, you'll die hungry. Let us be reasonable. Amen. Kindly. Go get a place where you can feed. Amen. My brothers, I want to tell you, Amen. even all of you left, I'm not a Branhamite. Never. Amen. I felt personally deceived. Amen. And I'm not going to preach anymore. Branham, I'll preach because I've preached him for the last 33 years. Eight and nine is when I go to these things. Say, so talk properly so that the people don't run away. What are you talking about? Yeah. When 72 left, yeah. Jesus said, you ought to, because that was now the atmosphere. People are like jittery. We are, we are seven, we were 7,000, 5,000. We are now 72 and then they have gone. And then it was, I say, do you also want to go? Yeah. Don't be jittery here. Yes. If you are scripture, stay with the scripture and come. Yes. If you are not scripture already, don't come. Yes. And this happened to everyone. Amen. Don't come here and look at me like, what is he saying? What did you come here for? <laughs> you came here to listen to scriptures. Yes. And that's what I'm presenting before you. Yes. And I'm quoting and I'm... Hallelujah. That's what you are talking about. Yes. Amen. Amen. Don't even give me dreams. <laughs> give me scriptures. Amen. After I'm gone, what I'm saying will remain. Amen. So don't scare me with the death. Scare me with where I'm going after death. Yeah. And you don't have a heaven to take me. Yeah. Neither do I have one, but Jesus has one. Amen. And he's taking all of us there. Amen. We are not going to waste our time. Don't talk properly. We are talking properly. Yeah. We are saying this thing is not meant. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If a man stand like a man, Amen. the Bible says, be ye men. Amen. In wrongdoing, be ye children. Amen.
But when it comes to the word be ye men, bana kaa hivi unaweza pinduliwa. Unapinduliwa na nani? Amen. Another one told me, you know I'm dealing with the hundreds. I'm not like you dealing with a few church. I asked him, bro, umefika hapo? He was listening, you know, I asked him, umefika pale mbako nasema, I'm dealing with hundreds. And I'm not dealing with the future members like you. I said, you freaked there. I asked him, you freaked there. Nini ambamo na njua nikisema kitu, I can prove it or say it. Some of them who are now showing, showing what he said about me, do not know he told me, you will never hear me mention your name again. Because I called him on Monday, like a brother would do to a brother. And he said, I will never hear, you will never hear me mention again. So when you are showing, get the other part, the AB log, that I will, you will never hear me mention again. Let him call me if what I'm saying is false. Because I see he said you will never hear me. And he told him you will never hear me. And I told him you are doing to me what I will never, never do to you. I will never stand on my pulpit to mention your name. I respect you as a pastor of a church. I'm not a minister of that church to be mentioned in that. I am speaking from my pulpit. Why should I be abused on my pulpit? You know, if I went to the church and preached there, then you can stand. But this is my pulpit. Amen. And I've not invited the members. There are people who are looking for freedom in Christ Jesus. Amen. Do you know I don't, I don't own you? Amen. I don't own none of Amen. you. No. Amen. You, you don't want us to be the record tree and ask, by the way, how many children do you have? Those are yours. Amen. But the church members, none of them is yours. Amen. So don't turn and say, these people are, be, I am pastor of hundreds. The only people that God gave you is your children. Amen. The rest belong to God. You, I have got six children. Three boys and three girls. The rest are brothers and sisters in the Lord. I don't own them. When someone wrote to me a text and said, Pastor, thank you. You've been a good pastor to me. I've decided I'll be fellowshipping. I'm not cursing him. You'll never hear me curse him. Amen. He has made a decision. Amen. The text is here with me. And God bless him wherever he is. Amen. Bless his children. Bless his wife. Bless him in all things. Amen. Things in heaven and things on earth. Amen. God bless my brother. Amen. He said, thank you for being my pastor. Amen. That's a good man. Amen. Why should you throw stones to such a man? You say, brother, thank you. That was a great time. We remember all the good things you did for us while you are here with us. When we meet on the street, God bless you, brother. How are you? How is your family? How is the church where you are fellowshipping? That is Christianity. Amen. Amen. It was a story of someone who met me say, oh, sorry, you are Simon, huh? He had never met me, but he had hated me. So when he met me, he was like, such this, such imagine this, Simon. Because someone has anointed the people from the pulpit to hurt other people. There are people in the church that have never seen me. Perhaps on the YouTube. But when they meet me, they hate me. If I tell them why, they can't tell me why. Why are you anointing people to create more enmity and animosity with other people? Create love. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Have love wherever you are going to go. And my friend, we are standing on the scriptures. Amen. And if I pass on, remember Simon loved the Lord. Wachana mambo ingina ambayo ilifanyika. Kumbuka jambo moja, alipenda mungu. Na anasema kwa sababu mungu alipenda, haka muokoa. Just like any of you. Amen. So something we are saying, you know, don't talk that, my friend. I will talk that. Amen. Until shamba yetu inajulikana mipaka ndio hii na ile na fulani. Tukisha maliza tunaweza ataketi tuongee. Lakini kama hujaweka mipaka ya maandiko, you are pretending. Amen. 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 When someone says I can't recommend you, he says like I'm the pulpit, people hate you. If you ask them what have I done to you? Nothing. What have I done to your church? Nothing. 
What have I done to your pastor? Nothing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us fight. The, this is a battle. Amen. Of the scriptures. Not flesh and blood. Amen. The Bible doesn't call us to fight flesh and blood. Amen. Let us fight scriptural battles. Amen. Amen. You know people who have suffered are the people that will never look at the scriptures. That's why someone tells you, even if Branham is going to hell, I will go with him. You wondering? Why? It is because maybe when you believed this message, you came home and said, I've believed William Branham is a prophet of God. And then your father said, now you are supposed to go to college. I don't care about your ass. You either dump that thing or I'm not taking to college. And then you accepted to, you said, I'm not going to dump it. You went and then you were denied education. You didn't go to university, you didn't go to college, or you didn't do, you didn't get some favors from your parents because of what you believe. When someone comes and tells you it was fake, my friend, you will defend it with the tooth and the nail. Because you are trying to cover for the loss. You say, where am I going to stand? I want to say, if you can't find anything in your life to call it dung, you are dead. People who go to the toilet is because they are alive. Amen. Paul reached a place like I said, I called all that dung. Amen. Moses was the next king. Yes. But he said, I lay that down. Amen. Jonathan was the next prince. The next king. But he laid that down until his father abused him. Not abused, insulted him. He told him, if you continue following the son of Jesse David, you will never prosper. You are doing that at the nakedness of your mother. You know he said that. If you say that in his way, a bad way. That's what Saul told Jonathan. He said, you are doing that at the nakedness of your mother's shame. But Jonathan only entered into a covenant with David. He told David, I know I will go before you go. I have left a son called Mephibosheth. When you've sat on the throne, remember my son. Amen. When the judgment was striking the house of Saul, David remembered the covenant and he said, go to the house of Saul and bring me Mephibosheth. This man gave me his throne. Amen. Jonathan gave his throne to David Amen. because he knew how the anointing was coming. There are people who suffered for this way. Don't tell me a little education. That because I suffered, so I'm trying to find out. My father was supposed to have made me to be this and that. I was supposed to go to this, and I believe the message after my first degree. So the second degree, my father refused. He told me, I will pay for your school fees if you abandon the message. And I didn't abandon the message. And I've suffered. And I've suffered. I've not suffered. With, you can suffer for 98 years and get the truth in the next year and you die. Yes. That one year you got the truth is much more than the next, the last 98 years you lived in vain. Amen. Moses lived in Egypt for 40 years. Hallelujah. But when he came was a short time. Amen. There was a man by the name Stephen, preached for a short time, and his life was over. Amen. I want to tell you those years are not wasted. Amen. But after you have heard this now, you begin the wasting of years. Amen. That time, Moses cannot blame himself for having been raised in the house of Pharaoh's daughter. But after he has been told, after God has visited him, and he turns that down, then that's wasted years. Amen. You are 100 years that you lived in the message. And you make a decision. And you die this year. I'm telling you it's not a waste. You have come back to your father. Amen. So people are counting the cost. It is too far to go back. It is not too far. I've been in the message for 33 years. I've abandoned everything. It is not easy. I'm speaking globally. It is online. I've been in the message for 33 years. But I've left it and I've called it. You know what I've called it? Dunk. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. If you don't have some dung in your life, yes. you died. That's true. Amen. 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 Paul said, all I gained. Yes. Paul was talking about what he gained. Amen. 
all are again a lawyer to become a tent maker. A lawyer to tell the believers in the book of Corinthians. You people, ni nani anendai kwa jeshi kwa garama yake? Hakasema hamujui maandi kwa yule. Ane udumu kwa madhabahu, atakule kwa madhabahu. Paul looked like a beggar. He had to abandon his profession. Then he was in tent making. Amen. Let me make tent. Amen. Because there are people who will go. Amen. You don't owe me tithe and offering. You owe it to God. Amen. 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 Is that true? Yes. Now people are so scared because of the cost. Mm. Count the cost, my brother. Yes. If you've not counted the cost, you had better say I'm slow. Like another brother said, I'm slow. I'm really trying to learn. But this day, he's the one that is telling brother, bear with me. I'm sending you this thing. I'm here. We've already gone. He told brother Simon, you've already healed. But for me, I'm dealing with this. I've just come to realize this thing. And this pastor told me, this brother, talk to him. He's laying in the midst of the Congolese. So the Congolese have got even a bad day of one. I talked to him. He sent me a lot of messages and say, brother Simon, Please bear with me. I know you are past this, but I'm getting born. Again. And then he told me, do you know, Brother Branham, he was bigger than all the Elijahs. Because among the Elijahs that went, Elijah, Elisha, John the Baptist, no one called himself Jesus Christ. When they came to Jesus, they came to John, they asked him, are you the Messiah? He said, no. But Branham said, Elijah of Malachi 4 is Jesus Christ. You want the message you said that? Yeah. Trying to do God a service without real soil and this is divine. Elijah of Malachi 4 is Jesus. And that was not enough. When he turned his back, he was hello you. Blasphemy. <laughs> Why am I there? Locating the second coming of the Lord. Amen. The second coming of the Lord is connected to false Christs. The rapture coming, there is no one who can even try to ape it. I repeat, when Jesus Christ was talking about it in Matthew 24, he said, they shall rise false Christ. If it were possible to deceive the very elect. The elect there is Israel. Matthew 21, a king rejected. Yes. Amen? Yes. Matthew 22 and 23. The elite of Israel, the leaders, reject Jesus. From Herodias. You remember the tax collector who told him, is it lawful for us to pay? Taxes. This was a branch of Pharisee that were working in the county government. No, it's true. From this one, we came to the Pharisees. One after the other, showing why they should reject Jesus. They tempted him, can we pay this? He answered. That one was not enough. Then the others came and said about the seven men married one sister. Then the Pharisees came. Then the last one, the lawyer came. Which all of them was the elite. And from there Jesus was officially turned down. Jesus Christ was the office of the son rejected by Israel. In the Old Testament was the office of the father rejected by Israel. In Acts chapter 7 was the office of the Holy Spirit rejected by Israel. Amen. Amen. In the gospel the son is rejected. In the Old Testament, the fatherhood is rejected. In Acts chapter 7, the Holy Spirit is rejected. Amen. And the nation took a final term. And the nation blasphemed. Amen. Then Matthew 23. After he has completely. Now he started dealing with a rejected stone. He started dealing with a wedding that people rejected to come. He is now just dealing with the scriptures that have to do with his rejection, his rejection, his rejection. Then when he got to Gen Matthew 23, verse 39, he started crying. Oh Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem. Mumelewa. He started crying. Oh Jerusalem, I wish you knew the day of your visitation. I've tried to bring you close to me, but you would not. 
But you'll never see me again until you say, Blessed is that cometh in the name of the Lord. Amen. That was a rejected king. Amen. Then Matthew 24. He's now asked with a little group that he made him to worship God. Father, I thank you because you've hid these eyes to these Pharisees, to the Sadducees, and you have revealed the babes. Father, I, love, I thank you because you saw it fit. And then he told the little flock, it is my father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He was a rejected man, but there was a people that went together with him. And when they accepted him, he told them, I appoint you a kingdom. You shall sit on the 12 thrones of Israel, judging Israel, not the nations. Amen. Then in Matthew 24, they asked him, you've been rejected. You're going to come back. How shall you come? Then in Matthew 24 is events leading to the coming. Matthew 25 are people in expectation where we get the 10 virgins. When we get, he says, if the owner of the house would have known the watch under which the thief would come. He's now, Matthew 25, the whole of it is dealing with who? He's dealing with our people that are waiting for the coming. Orion? Let's go to Matthew 16, 28. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not death of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. When the Son of Man is coming in the kingdom, is that a rapture? Is the king that was rejected, he is now coming back. The one that should have been received in Matthew 21. According to Zechariah 9, 9. Tell the daughter of Zion, thy king is coming to you. And they were busy asking, who is this? He is now promising again to come, but he cannot leave the earth until he calls three people to see that coming. Then he calls James, he calls Peter, and he calls John. After he has promised them, then he is transfigured. We were supposed to be in Luke chapter 9. Verse 27, because it's a flowing of the scripture. But I tell you of the truth, there be some standing here. We shall not test of death till they see the kingdom of God. Oh, look at look Anaita who follow me wa mungu. Na kuna watu wataka wawona who follow me wa mungu. Now Let thy kingdom come. Now they are going to Mount Transfiguration to see the kingdom. Amen. Oh God. So we put Elijah and Moses on the kingdom side. Amen. So we put them on the gospel of the kingdom. Because there are people who see the kingdom. And when the kingdom came, it was Moses and Elijah, Jesus in the middle, transfigured. Is that true? And it came to pass about an eight days after these things, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. As he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white as clistering. And behold, they talked with him two men, which was Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory and spoke of his disease, which he should accomplish in Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with a sleep, it is the effect of this man. Amen. Can we look for this man elsewhere in the Bible? Let's go in the book of Daniel and see the effect of this man sleeping. They were not sleeping in sleep. They were scared. This is the day of the resurrection. I want to show you this other coming, how it looks like. Matthew chapter 28. Before you go to Daniel, I hope you guys are there. Is the Lord blessing you? Amen. His countenance changed. So how did the countenance look like? Like the sun? Like the sun. I can hear someone saying, rush in Revelation 10 verse 1 very fast. 
How did the countenance of Jesus Christ look like? You've taken care of uh, sacred parenthood, right? The same Jesus, his face and his countenance shined as the sun. And he's calling that the kingdom. Amen. And if Peter is calling it, we are witnesses. I have to tell you before I depart. Now let's go to Matthew 28. And at the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, and came and rolled back the stone from the door, and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of the keepers, did he shake and became as dead men. There is an earthquake connected to this coming of the resurrection. Amen. And the people he resurrected, people they were scared, they were paralyzed. They froze like dead men. That's what happened to Peter, James, and John when the transfiguration took place. Amen. Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 4. I'm dividing, locating the second coming, how it will look like. Amen. You have to identify what you are not and what you are not expecting to know what you are to expect. Is it verse 14? And his head and his hairs were white like wool and as white as snow. And his eyes were a flame of fire. Put that down. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burn in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Then let's go down to verse 17. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Like the soldiers. Like Simon Peter, James, and John. John is experiencing it the second time. Amen. Amen. And this man is telling him, I am Jesus. I was once dead and I'm alive forevermore. Amen. That is the man that they are waiting to come because Peter said, We are eyewitnesses. Was John an eyewitness? Yes. Was James an eyewitness? Yes. Was that called a kingdom? Yes. Was it called the Son of Man coming in a kingdom? Yes. Is it associated with an earthquake? Yes. Is the coming in the rapture associated with an earthquake? Yes. No. There is no promise of an earthquake to the rapture coming. Amen. Don't tell us you are throwing the, the dust in the earth 11,000 times. And an earthquake follows and Alaska almost sank. See, judgment strike in the west coast. Nonsense. Simon, you are all out. Kabisa. The earthquake is associated with the resurrection here, with the people like dead, and it's also found in Revelation chapter 6. And when you had opened the 60s, there was a great earthquake. Are we together so far? Let's look for this man. We are coming to our final. Yeah, we are just doing good. Daniel chapter 7. And of course, Daniel chapter 10 as well. There are many, many scriptures that it shows this coming of the Lord is not a surprise, especially how he looks like. He has already done that in the Old Testament. Are you quiet? Amen. He has already even done that to a family. Amen. When the same man appeared to Manoah's wife. She said his countenance was like lightning. The same one that comes at the resurrection morning in the manifestation of an angel whose countenance was as the sun. Amen. Verse 9. Daniel 7, 9. 
And I beheld it, the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and his hair of his head like pure wool. Is this the same man John has seen? And his throne was like the fiery flame, and his will as burning fire. And a stream issued and came forth before him. A thousand times thousand ministered to him, and ten thousand ten, like that. And books were open and things like that. Now if you go to another place in chapter 10, we are identifying this person he is not new. Amen. Man transfiguration is the same man. Yes. Revelation 1, 14 is the same man. Amen. Revelation 10 is the same man. Amen. Transfiguration is the same man. Amen. And it's called the kingdom. Amen. Verse 6. From verse 7. 10 verse 7. Then I lifted my eyes and looked and behold a certain man clothed in linen whose loins were guarded with a fine gold of Euphus. His body also was like the burial, and his face had the appearance of lightning. Is it the same man? And his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like color of to polished brass, and his voice is like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision for the men that were with me, saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them, and so they fled to hide themselves. An earthquake again. Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision and there remained no strength in me for my calmness was turned into corruption and I retained no strength. That is the effect of this man. Amen. Brass speaks of judgment. Eyes of fire speaks of judgment. He doesn't come to you like that in the rapture. Amen. Did you get what I said? Mwenye anakuja kukunyakua hakuji na sauti ya maji mengi. Hakuji na miguya Shaba, hakuji na kitisho, anakuja vile, anapokuja kwa ukumu. He's not coming to judge, to judge you. He's coming to take you away. Come out my love. Come out my body. You are a part of me. He can't manifest himself like that to you. That is to Israel. Because when he's coming to Israel, it is redemption and judgment linked together. You was his rapture alone. Listen to this if you miss what I'm dealing with today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Has this man appeared to people in the Bible? Did this man appear to Isaiah? Amen. Is this a man that appeared to Isaiah? Amen. He's the same man that appeared to Ezekiel. Yes, yes. He's the same man that appeared at a place called Peniel. Yes. Is it the same man that Daniel fell, uh, Abraham fell down and said, I'm dust and ashes? Amen. Is it the same man? Amen. Is it the one that came to the uh, parents of Manoah? Amen. Is it the one that Moses feared to look at his face? Amen. Was he at that time coming to judge a nation? No, you didn't get it. He was coming to judge Egypt. Yes. That's what he told Abraham. Yes. And he came in a place, and the Bible says, and Moses feared to look at God. Yes. That is the man the angels have not looked at. Yes. It is Jesus in judgment. Yes. But the one that came to you, yes. came in mercy and grace. Yes. Didn't change his voice like voice of many waters. Yes. He came to you and said, you are part of me. Yes. You are chosen in me. Yes. I have loved you above all. Yes. I want you to separate yourself from the life of sin. He, came, he comes to every young man, to every young woman, to all of us. He comes in mercy. Amen. But when he comes in judgment, he's coming. The day of judgment has come. The day of vengeance and the year of my redeemed. How many of you, Sister Godfrey, I know you are read of the Bible. How many of you have read in the Bible, in the book of Isaiah? This is the day of vengeance. The year of my redeemed has come. 
He's coming. We can't go into that. We need to go into the vengeance of the Lord. When he puts on like this, it is found in the book of Isaiah. And I'll put on the garments of vengeance. The garment of vengeance is hair like wool. Eyes like flame of fire. The cattle is up here. The voice like the voice of many waters. That is the garment of vengeance. He has no vengeance because he was a propitiation for you. He appeased God. He can't come to you with the garments of vengeance. Thank you, Jesus. What are some of you honest Ana kuja ndiyo lakini amevaa vipi? Ndio tujue anakuja kwetu ama anakuja kwa Israeli. Amen. God free you have your Bible you, that you are not recording. You can come for that scripture that calls it the garment of vengeance. Villa alivo fanana, those are the garments of vengeance. And the vengeance, alikuwa ni mutu wa uko, anakuja kupatiliza, kama muna elefana mkiswahili. He is coming to avenge the blood of his brother. He was called Goel. Gohel has a root word for kinsman, vengeance, revenge, avenge. All those words is one word in Hebrew, Gohel. Amen. So when he says he puts on the garment of vengeance, he's putting on the garment that he says, I am the brother of the people you are oppressing, Amen. and I've come to deliver them. Amen. You got in the book of Isaiah? Yeah, Isaiah 59, yes. 17. Isaiah 59, 17. Are you seeing the way he is dressed? Shows what is the audience is coming for. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate yeah. and as a helmet of salvation upon his head. Yeah. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing. And was Are you seeing two things there? Yes. Righteousness for Israel and salvation for Israel. Amen? And vengeance for the enemy. Amen. That's how he's dressed. But for them when they see him, they will see the nails in his hands. It is the seeing. Amen. It is how you see him that reveals what he has come to do. Read for us. You know I'm preaching Vicar Razzle? This, my, this is my last service. <laughs> so I feel so strong. What is wrong with that? Go ahead. Garments of vengeance for clothing, and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, according accordingly, he will repay fury to his adversaries. Yes. Recompense to his enemies. Yes. To the islands, he will repay recompense. Yes. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. Uh, for some, west was America. Jesus is standing in Israel, and he's saying, as the sun. As the lightning shines in the west, in the east and seen in the west, someone to them, he was addressing the continent. To someone, he was addressing the continental maps and geography. Sometimes geometric. You know what I mean. He is standing in Israel and he's telling them, you people, you only see when the sun is setting, when the rain is coming, when it's fall weather. And the Son of Man, when he comes, it will be like at the Salina, and he's saying it is going to be public. And he's addressing the nation of Israel. But you want to convert that to appear, he was addressing Kenya. Kenya was not even there. He was addressing that geographical land. Those were the people under consideration because the mystery of Christ to show another race had not been unveiled. It was still lying in God, hidden God, waiting for Paul to bring it out. Yes, amen. 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 Vengeance is how many one? Okay, let me use uh, let me use Moses when explaining this goel. Let me use Moses and uh, and Peter. You just good names for your children, sister. Good, Joshua, Peter, Moses, faith and and hope and and Ruth. That's nice. Praise the Lord. Let's relax a little bit. Just clap and relax a little bit. So I take this water here. Now, we are going to a scripture here. I want to use this brother, the sons of our brother. Allow me to use death as an example. And we want to use you. Accidentally, Onesimus, they have gone to the forest to cut wood together with Peter. 
and the axe head slips and kills Peter by accident. Onesimus is not supposed to stop and explain it was an accident. He's supposed to run to the cities of refuge because Moses is coming to avenge because he's related. He was given a scriptural right so that when he avenges, maybe kills Onesimus, the land is cleansed of innocent blood. Because God says the blood defileth the land until the person who shed that blood dies, then the land goes back to original. The blood is, the earth is cleansed by the blood and is also defiled by the blood. So this man is running to the city of refuge. He's either going to Gedesh, to Hebron, to Beza, to Ramoth Gilead, to Shechem, and six cities of refuge. Uh, Colin. When he gets there, he stands at the gate. And then the elders of the people find out what happened. He say, I accidentally. They have to examine the tools and the weapons employed in that accident. If it's a mukuki, they know this was a garment of vengeance. You premeditated to kill. But if it was a stone you were throwing or it's an axe head, he stays in the city until the death of the high priest, then he's free. That person, now that time, Moses is not just called a brother. He's got a goel. Bring justice in the home of Brother Reuben. When God says, vengeance is mine, he's actually saying, I'm your elder brother. Amen. Leave it to me. Amen. I will deal with it. That's how Joab killed Abner. Because Abner had killed Azel, the brother of Joab. And Joab went to the gate of Hebron and lured who? Abner. And killed Abner, and no one killed Job. David lamented and said, Abner. Abner, Abner, how did you die the death of a fool? Did they tie your legs? Because you should have run. That is called the death of a fool. Preachers preach to us one of these days the death of a fool. Someone who cannot run in the city of refuge. The name of the Lord Amen. is a mighty tower. The rushes run and they are saved. Amen. There is a time in your life you find yourself running, Amen. but run in the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, the second coming of the Lord, we are coming to a close. The second coming of the Lord has got signs. Rapture has no signs. That when you see this woman, maybe a Catholic, or a woman, or Russia, rapture coming has no son to watch. Amen. Because if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwelleth in you, he that raised Christ from the dead, you don't have to look for him. Now he's in there. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Kama ngufu ambasita kubadisha mwili wako. Na uokolewe, zinakanda ni mwako Mambu ya kutazama inje Ita usiana, ita kusaidia na nini Amen. Kama kitu kita kacho kuchukua huko nacho Amen. Amen. Let me give an example Let me give an example that you can understand If there is a bride in your home You know that is one woman that is not in a hurry They will come The person they are coming for is I don't have to look for you. No. Even if I delay, they'll have to wait. Yes. And never get to a place to quarrel a bride. Kwa nini umechelewa? Umechelewa ya arusi ni yako? Amechelewa kuenda wapi? Arusi ni ya? Yake. Unamuambia unachelewa. Kuenda wapi? Kwa arusi. Ya nani? Yako. Alafu ni mechelewa. The bride is the only person in a wedding that doesn't get late. Wala wakukula pilau kama sisi tunayasa chelewa. Kuna kama pilau imekwisha. Lakini bibi harusi akifika ndio harusi inaanza. Alafu namwambia umechelewa. Umechelewa alikuwa na harusi kwa harusi ya ndugu yako ama yake. I'm saying kama una nguvu ndani yako itakayokubadilisha. 
Ukraine na Russia haina uhusiano. Kama ni mwanamke ni katoliki ama ni vice president haina uhusiano. Kama California itaenda chini sienda haina uhusiano. Wendeni kwa magazeti mkiangalia California. I'm feeding the inner man that will take me up. You don't have a sign. The sign is inside of you. It is the Lord himself. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. Isn't that clear? That mkiona mataifa nani aliambia angalie mataifa? Kiji. Sasa niliambia kwamba mataifa watapigana na kutakuwa na mitetemeko na ugonjwa atauni covid. Wakati ilikuja unajua kwa watu walikuwa wanatumiana moja kwa mwingine. Ati kulikuwa na unabii inaitwa jam warfare. Lakini Mungu alisema usikuze hao wengine. Ndugu alinipikia simu from Phoenix. And he told me brother Simon I am in caution. And I'm hearing the Egyptian screaming out there because of COVID. You know, I never answered. The next time the wife was telling me pray for my husband, he's in a bad state, he's with COVID in the hospital. I also never said anything. I only prayed, prayed. When I went to Brazil, all my family got COVID. And they're all alive today by the grace of God. I told him this is not Goshen if you wanted to call Goshen. Goshen ni mtu andani. Amen. Huyu hawezi konjeka, huyu atakonjeka na atapona. Amen. Your husband got covid. Does it mean he was not a believer? Murana got something that I said, Murana I never told you. When we talked akaniambia nina napika napika naitwa magani na kohoa. Nikusi kuambia waje niambie wewe ilikuwa covid. <laughs> my wife when I called when I was in Brazil, she told me in my nose there is a certain smell ni kama some chemical wewe daktari yes ni covid. Na alikuwa mgonjwa kabisa, mimi natoka. Lakini wakapona. Asante. Amen. Sasa Miriam told me kule ilikuwa ni ndio mgonjwa za Miriam. She told me don't visit me this thing is not good it's contagious. Suri ambia hiyo. Na siku lakini nitakuja sasa. Si tu ni ndo nikaa. Na tukapona bwana asifiwe. Kwa sababu mimi ni Mungu na ponyaye magonjo yenu yote. So I told my brother be very careful this quote you are sending out. He told me that we have been sending we have been sending the group lakini tumenyamaza. Don't do that. The sale is not coming here. It's coming in there. Amen. Ukikonjeka and that's why we got a prayer meeting we are prayer prayer today after the service why so that tukiwa wagonjwa tupo tupone si kwamba tuzoezi konjeka tunakonjeka na tunapona kwa sababu aliumba ofisi akasema Jehovah Rafa mimi ni Mungu mponyaji wenu na nitakuwaje mponyaji kama mkonjeki mkiwa wagonjwa ndio na waponya ni Mungu ndio anatuponya final scriptures We're coming to this close. Then we said this. Rapture coming. This is important for me to say this. When Paul talked about the rapture coming, say, we say this to you by the word of God. We shall not all sleep. Now don't sleep on me, please. We tell you by the word of God, that word had not been issued by Jesus. He had not been issued in the Old Testament. The Lord himself had descend with a shout, the voice and the trump. That part of the word was not spoken. Paul was the first one to speak about it. Amen. You can't get it in the gospel of Peter, James and John. Never. Paul alone. Amen. I can say my, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall be changed in a tingling of an eye. Amen. It's a mystery. Amen. We shall be changed. Something that no human being knew. But it was revealed to Paul for you. Amen. And the judge of the Salonians was a church that was really persecuted. And that's why Paul told them, do not grieve like people who have no hope. For we tell you by the word of the Lord. Amen. Comfort ye one another with these words. Amen. The message of the rapture is a message of comfort. It's not a message of wrath and judgment. No. Can't you see the difference? Amen. 
So if he was to come for the rapture, would he look like like the sun with the voice like the sound of many waters? Who oh. oh. would he be a lion with the thunders? Oh. But the lion roars at the enemy. Mm. Lion is a king. That's his coming to Israel. Mm. What am I telling you? Feed on him. Mm. When he comes around and he says, where the carcass is, someone comes from nowhere and he tells you the body word. The carcass that is mentioned in Matthew 24, ni wala watakuwa wamewawa atakapokuja katika ufunuo kuminatisa. Where the Bible says, and I saw another angel standing in the sun. Calling to the fall of the air, come to my feast. Come and eat the bodies of the captains, of the rich, of the poor, of the horses, because they are carcasses. When he comes in Matthew 24, where the carcass is, those vultures will gather. Now, I didn't call you a vulture. Those birds will eat carcasses. Watu wanapea nyinyi majina na mnanyamaza. <laughs> Wanaita nyinyi ndeka wanakula mili ya kufa, numa nasama the body word of the son of man. Show me the body word there. When he's coming in Matthew 24, he's coming for war. And even the way he's dressed, that he follows the carcass of the body, is eyes like flame of fire. Let's read. Yes, that's our last scripture reading. Revelation 19 verse 12. Godfrey, can you read that for me? While he's reading that, I want you to realize the attributes of Revelation 19, 12 when he's coming is the same attributes of Daniel. Is the same attributes of Revelation 1. Brass is the coming of the Lord. It is coming next for the kingdom. Read for us, brother. Go to read first. We are finishing right there. Thank you so much. Yeah. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Why don't you read properly so people capture my? Like what? His eyes were as fl a flame of fire. Okay. If you could assist me, Wanzia Juki Dogo. And I saw heaven open. Yes. And behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. Yes. His eyes, His were, eyes were as a flame of fire. Did we see that in Daniel? Amen. Mm -hmm. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but himself. Mm -hmm. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Thank you. And his name was called the Word of God. Uh -huh. And the armies which were in heaven followed him. Is it coming for war? Yes. And why is he coming for war? It is after Israel has been oppressed. Mm -hmm. They have now cried, save now, save now. He's coming in, in revenge. Yes. This is how he's dressed. Continue. And that is called the second coming of the Lord. Amen. The and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. And in his mouth goeth what? A sharp sword. Uh -huh. That with it he should smite the nation. Uh -huh. He's coming to smite. Yes. <laughs> and, and, he, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Mm -hmm. And a rod of iron goes to show there are people who are supposed to be forced mm. to submit. There will be nations in the millennium that will resist Jesus. That's the reason of the rod of iron. Amen. And he tell the winepress of the fierceness of and wrath of Almighty God. Mm -mm. And he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Mm. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying, To all the fowl that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourself together under the supper of the great God. Mm -hmm. And he, that ye may eat the flesh of the kings, and the flesh of the captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and the flesh of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bold. Those are now the carcasses. Yes. Both small and great. Hey, that is now what the equals mention shall eat. <laughs> 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 
carcasses of dead people sure. as a result of judgment. Did you notice what Brother Godfrey read? That his eyes were a flame of fire. Amen. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Let's go to his address to one of the churches of the seven churches that the people call that the church ages of the Gentiles. And I want you to answer for me if this man who comes to this, is he coming for mercy for judgment? Tyra. Tyra. Revelation chapter 2. Is that the place? 2 verse 18. What does it say? And it's, unto the angel of the church in Thyatira. Unto the angel of the church of Thyatira. Right. These things say the son of God. The son of? God. Who has his eyes like under a flame of fire. This is not a new person. He has already come to Daniel with that attribute. John has already seen him in Revelation 1 with that attribute. John has already seen him in Matthew 17 with this attribute. He is already being seen in Revelation 19 with this attribute. He is coming to the terror. Is that you? No. Why is he dressed like this? You come around and tell people these are the charges of the Gentiles. Who is scared happy? Let us look at the way he's dressed. And if you get this man, we shall take him to Revelation 19 and Revelation 10. For those elements of Branham is him here. In the seals, he said, did you see his eyes and his hair? He is going to Israel at this time. He also admitted. Even the preachers of this message of Branham are the one who are, some blame should not even be assigned to Branham. Should be assigned to preachers as well. Can you read that? Finish it. Under a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. Fine brass, are you seeing it? Is it in Revelation 19 the same way? Is it in Daniel the same way? Is it in Revelation 1 the same way? Is it 17, Matthew 17 the same way? Is it what Paul, did, did Peter called the second coming? Amen. Continue. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works. No, Godfrey, where you are taking me, it will take some bit of my time. I'm just done. He said, the son of God, whose eyes are like flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. He's coming in judgment. Amen. He can't come to the body of Christ like that. Amen. Are you seeing this one? We've only picked one. Amen. And then I'm giving you a key. When you are reading the seven charges of the book of Revelation, study his attributes and tell me whether that is you. Amen. When he says, I'm Alpha and Omega, Old Testament language. Amen. When he says, now give us what is going to do to the, the, to the, uh, the overcomer? Verse 26. I'm done. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Huh? Power over who? The nations. Power over who? Yeah. Nations. Who is supposed to rule the nations? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Power over the nations. To do what? And he will rule them with a rod of iron. Melissa, do it the next verse. <laughs> and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. Where is that scripture found in the Old Testament? <laughs> Isaiah 30. So, the Old Testament holds the key in understanding the book of Revelation. All the symbols in the book of Revelation came from the Old Testament. And that's how we have located this man and we've seen he existed there. But the one that does the rapture does not exist anywhere except in the message of Paul that he called a mystery. Give him a hand clap. Amen. Just finish that part. That's the last part we are reading. Finish that last part. Verse 27. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter. Then what a funjika, they will never even hold anything. Yes. The vessels of potter come a nyungu. He will break them up. And when they are being broken, this is the last stage of a clay vessel. It cannot be redeemed at that time. 
You can only redeem it if you are still needing it, removing the root of bitterness and the bottle needing the, the udongo. Then you can redeem it. But once it has become a pot of vessel, when it is broken, it is finished. That's how the nations will be. And God is giving power. Did he promise to give the 12 tribes power? But the next word there is important. The next word. And I will give verse 28. Mm -hmm. Rudia to the next word in the last the last part. Give it us. No? Read it so that it connect, connect the dots. Just go to verse 27. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. He shall rule. But who was supposed to rule with the rod of iron? Jesus, isn't it? Yes. Amen? Amen. Revelation 12. And the son shall rule them with a rod of iron. But he's now giving the same authority to another man. Who will be partakers of the kingdom? Go ahead. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Yeah. As I received it, I also give it to you Amen. to rule. Amen. To time sana. Oh, to time sana. Tuki kizungu ka kiti cha enzi tu taimba osana. Sister God of Isandre, how is that song? When we just want to feel good, we just sing. But we know the throne belongs to who? And I saw a throne, and I saw no one sitting on the throne. Tu taimba osana. Oh, to taimba osana. Oh, to kikizinguka kiti cha enzi to taimba. You know there is a part of you that just want to be drunk. When Paul said, "Don't be drunk with the wine, be drunk with the spirit," you just feel I like just want to sing that song because it pertains to the people that have got a purpose on earth. I want to tell you, finally, the devil don't know, does not know who you are. You are so, Paul called you and anytime he talked about a mystery. Let's pray, brothers. Let's live right. Let's be influenced. A brother told me, if we don't quote, where shall we get inspiration? <laughs> have I quoted? I've finished two hours and I still have much. I wanted even to tell you how Moses shall remove the veil from the face. The Moses of, Ma of uh, Esclaras 24. 34. That they had to hide his face. And then Paul is saying in 2 Corinthians, the veil shall be removed and then they shall see him. The connection. And I'm not quoting. It's not a work, it's the work of the Lord. Amen. Give him a hand clap. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, that is even a message. When Peter says, he has begotten us again. He has given us another chance to go back to privileges that we had run away from. Praise the Lord. Amen. They are waiting for Jesus Christ to come the second time with salvation. Amen. We are not waiting for Jesus to come with salvation. Salvation is present. Amen. Amen. Hakuna mungu kama wewe. Hakuna o popote u hakuna mungu kama wewe o hakuna o popote o hakuna mwenye shara Sikwa majeshi 
Blessed Redeemer, Lord. We come before you again this time, Lord Jesus. We're so grateful, Lord God, for the way you've opened yourself, Father, in the scriptures, Lord. Father, when you met those who are going to Emmaus, Lord, you opened the scriptures, you opened their understanding, Lord. And Heavenly Father, Lord God, you've shown us, Lord Jesus, how much value you've placed upon your people. And that value is the grace of Jesus Christ. Because he knew it was to forgive. He knew it was to cleanse. He knew it was to wash, Lord Jesus. Father, to present our people, Lord. Unrebukable, Lord. Unreprovable, Lord Jesus. People, Father, who are wearing your perfection. People that, Father, Lord God, you've given your righteousness, Lord. We want to thank you, Father, again to know we have been put under the right expectation by the scriptures. We are the secret on earth today. We are one no father, no prophet of Israel. Oh, hallelujah. Would mention, Father. You came, Father, to unveil a secret that was hidden inside of you. You've separated the scriptures for us. We thank you again, Lord, today, Father. We thank you for the victory you've given us in our meetings, for the interaction and fellowship, for the healing of Father you are giving us, for the next meeting that lays ahead of us. We sanctify your great holy name. Move among your people in gifts, Lord. Bless your people, Lord Jesus. Raise their faith, O God. Answer their question, O Father. Settle them before you, Lord. We appreciate you, bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus, release us for a short time, Father, as we come in, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen.